This conversation is taking place at the DuPont Environmental Center in the Russell W. Peterson Wildlife Refuge. We're at the DuPont Environmental Education Center in South Wilmington, and we're talking with Chris Grunder, the CEO of the Delaware Association of Nonprofit Agencies. Welcome. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. Uh, for full disclosure, <clears throat> I'm a member of the board of directors of DANA, as uh, the short name of, of the organization is called. What exactly is DANA? Well, the Delaware Association of Nonprofit Agencies is a, uh, a nonprofit organization that supports other nonprofit organizations. So we're a membership organization, and people look to us for uh, capacity building, training around uh, organizational, operational things, as well as public policy and advocacy. We, uh, we represent the sector down in uh, Dover and, and even in Washington, D.C., on issues that uh, affect all nonprofits. You know, a couple of years ago, Dana seemed to be sort of fading away. Um, can you explain a little bit about what happened yeah. and, and uh, why it's back in the spotlight again? If you look at the history of the organization, it's been around for 26 years now. Um, it's been primarily a membership organization. That The dues were uh, making up the budget, uh, the membership dues that people were paying, and it's also always had a capacity issue as a result. So a lot of good things have happened through Dana, but it's always just been a little bit limited. So in the, in the spring of 2010, they, they decided to, to you know put some invest in it and, and look at what other people were doing in other states and, and try to rejuvenate the organization. Yeah, I mean, I was part of a small group that, that looked across the country and said, uh, First of all, you can't be just a membership organization. Right. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Uh, the best models that we found were some combination of membership and strong support from the philanthropy community, um, which we now have. Yes, that's right. Uh, uh, Delawareans don't give away a lot of money. Individual They're, giving in the state of Delaware. Individual giving huh? is, uh, is really below the national average. Why, why do you think that Despite is? Despite incomes being above Despite the national average. Despite incomes above. Why, above why do you think that is? Um, I think, you know, Delaware in, in a lot of ways has had a history of giving through the funding community, through Longwood Foundation, for example, and through the business community, uh, MBA historically, and then Bank of America, DuPont. Uh, so a lot of organizations have, have sort of relied on that and haven't really maybe done the asks and, and connected with their individual or, um, donors and individual constituents and people who are benefiting from their services. So I think that's an area that we can help with. I think uh, we can do some, some training and some education in that area to help these organizations with marketing themselves and getting out there and doing the ask. Um, I think there's another area that we can help with in terms of uh, just the sector and making sure that people in the, in the state of Delaware understand the importance of the sector, uh, whether that's the general public or our elected officials. I think there's, there's work that Dana well, can do there. Talk about the importance. I mean, talk about the economic importance of, of, of strong nonprofits. Well, 40, over 43,000 people are employed uh, by nonprofits in the state of Delaware. And if you look at a state with about 900,000 people, that's not a small number. Um, and bigger than manufacturing and, and, and uh, some other industries as well. So people don't know that, and uh, so that there's a real economic impact uh, of the people who are employed there. Um, I think the other thing is that if you think about the services that are delivered by nonprofits, those services wouldn't otherwise be delivered uh, by the state. So people need to understand that value. And I think part of what we need to do is, is raise, raise that uh, awareness for the sector and the importance. <coughs> Who are the people now involved on, on our board? Talk about that a little bit. It's, a, it's, a, it's an all-star crew. I mean, I, I'm not saying that because I know they're going to watch this, but the reality is we, we have uh, leaders from the funding community like Thayer DuPont, uh, Peter Morrow, uh, Fred Sears. We have people uh, from the business community like uh, Mark Turner. Uh, Rochelle Weibel uh, is from the nonprofit community. So we've got a good mixture of nonprofits and for profits and, and funders. And that's, again, a best practice that we saw with other states. Yeah, that wasn't before. the case before. It was all nonprofit. And uh, while that's an important voice to have at the table, uh, it can't be the only voice. Besides from money and reorganization, which, you know, I think you have in hand now, what are the other challenges <clears throat> in general to the nonprofit sector, both in, in Delaware and perhaps largely in the country? We know we can't be everything to everybody, at least not in the start. Um, Dana has to find a sweet spot to focus on. And so what I've been trying to do is doing a listening tour and talking to our different members and people who aren't members of Dana and asking them what their needs are. One of the common themes we're finding is board governance. And I think there's a real, uh, a real sweet spot, like I said, there for us to focus on that. And, and there's organizations, whether they're big or small, are finding challenges in board governance. I think 
Uh, they found when times were, were fat, so to speak, and the dollars were there, the board could relax a little bit. When times were a little leaner, they, they need the board to step up and, and act in a certain way and, and help in a certain uh, fashion. So roles and responsibilities and uh, really understanding the, 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 the connection between the executive staff and the, and the board is important. Succession planning. All of those things are things that, again, uh, we're finding a lot of organizations, not just here in Delaware, but nationwide, are struggling with. So if we can build uh, training uh, around those areas, uh, then we're going to be successful. Back to the challenges, uh, these are pretty lean economic times, both federally and yeah. uh, here in, in Delaware. I guess DFAC's going to have a report soon. Um, what, what are you telling the, the nonprofit community to expect this year from the government, uh, is it a, a positive message, a, a tough message? I think the folks down in, 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 uh, in Dover are hearing and understanding the needs of the nonprofit sector, um, although the reality is there's no free lunches. I mean, and that's, that's the reality. Being good isn't good enough. Um, these organizations have to focus on being great. And what does that mean? It means being, uh, you know, operationally efficient, but it also means, you know, finding their own lunch and, and going out and, and having the conversations and, and raising their money from other sources beyond the government and beyond, uh, you know, the, the large foundations and even the corporations uh, that, you know, the banks who, who, who've been uh, traditionally there but have sometimes, you know, run into challenges with their, their dollars as well. So um, I think part of this is, you know, the, the old days aren't going to come back. <laughs> There's a new, there's a new, there's a new time, and we all have to adjust to that new time. What do you want to say to Delaware a year from now about Dana uh, and the nonprofit sector? Well, I, I want to yeah, say I'll give you a year and a half. Time. A year and a half. Uh, well, I, I, I know that this is not a sprint. Uh, I know it's a marathon, and the reality is we, we have to walk before we run and, and crawl before we walk. I mean, there, there's work that we need to do as an organization to get our ducks in a row so that we can better serve. So part of our uh, first six to nine to 12 months is really getting our house in order. Uh, we have a program called Standards for Excellence. Uh, we, we are not Standards for Excellence uh, certified ourselves, so we have to lead by example. Um, and it, I don't want to ever be in a situation where I'm saying do as I say, not as I do. I want to be able to show that we're, we're leading uh, by example. So I want to be in a position where we're, we're stable and we have our house in order so that we can better serve the, or, the organizations that are out there. We're really moving towards the Delaware Alliance for Nonprofit Advancement. So this is the new Dana um, and it starts today and it, it'll continue over the next uh, year to 18 months but we'll be, we'll, be, uh, we'll be around for a while and we'll, you know, we're excited about it. Thanks Chris. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks for the opportunity. You're connected with Content Delaware.